I'm tired. Guess I'll wash my face before going to bed. Of course you will. I should take a shower. Open the door and go inside. Man, a bass a bass nice once in a while. Let me see his booty! All I get to see is women with huge tits in this game. I want to see something else. Give me some guys with abs. I don't know. No, never mind. Don't. He's a teenager. Don't. Give, give me the other guy. I'll take the adult. He'll just show me one of the naked I'll look at his, his aunt. I don't care. It's not him. Unless he's 18. Then it's legal. But at the same time. Just no. <laughs> What's that noise? Is it coming from next door? A movie or maybe a video game? Shit, that's loud. The noise won't stop. My temper is hanging by a thread. Would punching the wall work? Maybe if I wait a bit. Nope, the noise shows no sign of stopping. I can't take this any longer. It finally stopped. Maybe I'll water the plants. Good little succulent, I mean like... What plants? We have never mentioned, mentioned plants! Do you mean take a piss? Sooner or later, there's gotta be a reason for this room. What plants? Plants. You got plants. Maybe I'll water the plants. What plants? What does he mean by plants? This'll work. Oh, that's about the right amount. Really? That's it. Go fuck yourself. I'm weirdly sleepy. could be calling me. Oh, your mama? Oh wait, she's dead, sorry. Doesn't seem to want to stop breathing, so I reach for the phone. Hello? Head there lying silent, all I hear is breathing. Huh, what the hell? Hey, what do you think you're doing? Please don't look inside. Chills run down my spine. My body involuntarily jerks and slams the receiver down. I'm gonna be honest. I'm having this thought that what's that? If he's a pedophile, what that's referencing is, yeah, you know, inappropriate and bad. I'm hoping I'm wrong, but. 
Uh, chills run down my spine and my body involuntary jerks and slams the receiver down. That voice, it sounded familiar. Someone's pranking me, or they're probably trying to call me again. I guess I'll just lie in bed and wait. I shut my eyes and wait. The room is quiet and doesn't seem like anything's gonna happen. I must be tired after all. My consciousness slowly fades. Luckily, I'm not bothered by another phone call. The next day, I wake up to an oppre oppressive heat. I drag my Lissa's body outside and charge the electronic shop in search of batteries. Since it's an older battery, I'm not having much luck finding what I need. By the time I get what I set out for, the sun has already set. Hmm. Why are the lights in my room on? That's strange. I'm sure I shut them off when I left. I can hear faint sounds from the other side of the door. Something's definitely inside. It must be. I've given Aunt Nuzami a key to my apartment. I kind of doubt it, but it could be. I hold my breath. I grab the Noradum and turn it and slowly turn it. There's no resistance. It's unlocked. I breathe in and cautiously crack the door open. <sighs> hey. Oh, fuck, sir. I let myself in. What are you doing in my apartment? I want to talk with you before we headed to the Black Rabbit. So you picked my lock? Yeah, waiting outside would have been so boring. What does it bother you? I'm a little impressed. Calm and composed, I see. What a mature young man. So what do you want to talk about? I'm sure you've heard all about me from Bond, so I don't see why else you would want to know. I've heard about the underground matches, Ami's abduction, and Kubataro's case, too. There was something I needed to hear, and I need to hear it directly from your mouth. Blood Metri, that strange power you claim to have. Do you know something about it? Yes, though it's just a hypothesis. That's better than me. I don't know the first thing about it. <laughs> I suppose if I'm to be your teacher, I can't really turn down such a sincere request. That mysterious power of yours is an extension of your intuition. You might know it better as your sixth sense, a little something that warns you of danger. You're saying it's like my instincts? Yes, you could call it that too. Everyone possesses it to some extent, however your sixth sense is unusually keen. It's probably why you never lost any of those underground matches. Of course, you also had the physical abilities and reflexes to react to the danger you sensed. I can kind of get a sense for what she's saying. When I focus during a fight, I just become so much more aware of my surroundings. That's got to be that sixth sense. But the true value of your sixth sense isn't limited to that. Animals are fascinating, you know. Abilities that aren't necessary for survival are pruned. On the other extreme, they can awaken new abilities if they need them to survive. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? The day Ami disappeared, I met Kakuya. I knew that my life was in grave danger. You're saying that meeting woke up my sixth sense, this blood metri power? Precisely. You're an excellent disciple. But not every person gains some great new power when they face imminent danger, and I believe in your case that you likely already possess that ability. Perhaps a parent or ancestor of yours had spiritual powers. Don't ask me. Mother was just a normal woman, she didn't have any weird powers. And what about your father? I don't even know what the guy looks like. All I know is that he abandoned my mom. I see. I apologize if I upset you. Nah, I don't care. Anyways, you should know a lot about the spirit world and all that. I must say, it's nice to have a disciple who views my skills with such respect. But all of my friends know everything we've just discussed. It's common knowledge. Wow. What kind of friends are those? You got a group of supernatural fanatics or something? A certain sponsor has hired me to investigate spirits and supernatural activities, and Ban's helping me with that. Or Bon. A group that investigates spirits sounds like something from a comic book. So who's this sponsor of yours? The head of a distinguished family you've heard of. He has some strange abilities himself. He uses a peculiar way of thinking to solve supernatural cases most people wouldn't consider. Like defending a spirit's attack with a plastic sheik and broken umbrella. Ooh, it was me! It was me! It's quite reckless. What the hell kind of idiot is that? He looks like your basic sullen middle-aged man. It goes without saying that he's not my type. He's currently on an overseas business trip with a friend, which is why I have to try apps around investigating cases now. Although thanks to the situation, I was able to meet a wonderful young man like you. You are creepy. Well then, it's about time. We should get going. By the way, Cade, do you happen to know if anyone's committed suicide in the apartment before? 
How should I know? Why would you just ask me that at the blue? There's an extremely ominous presence in the apartment. I didn't want to worry you, so I wasn't going to mention it, but I changed my mind. Have you experienced any unusual phenomena here? Yeah, a bunch of weird things have happened. I almost died once, too. And yet you seem pretty unfazed. Well, obviously I didn't die. And so much strange stuff has been happening lately that I might just be getting used to it. You're a pretty carefree kid. I sense a power in the apartment that draws spiritual beings to it. Like a famous suicide spot or a haunted era area. Well, thanks. I feel all warm and fuzzy now. So what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Without knowing what's causing it, it's hard to recommend an effective approach. Moving out would be the easiest solution. I really don't have time for that. And anyway, I'm not some weakling to look. Let's. Anyway, I'm not just some weakling that's going to move out just because of some stupid ghost. I figured you'd say that. It's your life, whatever you like. Do whatever you like. Oop, not that. Wrong button again. So you said something else. I don't know. When we arrive at the Black Rabbit, the lights are on. Oh, welcome. I know it's Miss here, and she looks exhausted. I wasn't expecting to see you here. Yes, I won't be long, though. I have to meet with a new detective. Her eyes are completely lifeless, although that's to be expected. For two weeks now, she's been doing anything and everything she can to think of to find Ami. Police, detective, flyers, the internet, none of it has helped. Would it help if I told her that Ami is alive, but being held hostage somewhere? Even if I did tell her that, there still wasn't anything she'd be able to do about it. Worse, if she gets involved, she could end up dying like Maruhashi. Despite that, should I, should I tell her about what I know about Ami's situation? No. Okay, I'm leaving. No, that, no, he, no. After a bit, Rosé, who was waiting outside, comes in. So is that your aunt? She seems distraught. It was painful to even look at her. Hey, sorry I'm late. The Mahjong game. Ma what, Mahjong game? Mahjong, Mahjong, whatever it's called. I feel like I know how it's said, but my brain's like, no, that's, no. Got intense at the end. Mahjong. Oh, what's the matter? <sighs> You're the most incorrigible, thick-headed man I've ever had the displeasure of meeting, and yet I adore you. You're beyond all hope. Death would be a kindness to you. Uh, what the heck are you so mad about? I don't have the energy to explain it to you. Well, how's your investigation going? Don't you dare tell me that it slipped your mind and you wasted all your time playing Mahjong. Don't be ridiculous. I'm a cons I'm a consummate professional. Here's all the info I've found so far. He didn't have any friends or close relatives, so I wasn't able to get much. But I grilled Miroku's, pu Miroku's publisher and it paid off. I finally got my hands on this. <sighs> Excuse me. Oh, so he originally wanted to be a doctor, did he? Changing career paths from doctor to an author is quite a drastic life change. The reason he did so is a mystery. Apparently he didn't talk to talk about himself much, but it's doubtful that, that Cash was the reason. The Moroku family is extremely well off. Yes, that's evident just based on that mansion. The poor author wouldn't be able to live like that. Apparently his publisher never once set foot in that house either. Seems like Moroku hated anyone intruding on his private life, pedophile. So basically, if we're to learn about his private life, our only option is to rummage through that mansion. That's right. I also looked into what was recorded on that tea tape. The girl disappeared half a year ago. She was last seen at an intersection about a, about a five minute stroll from the Moroku residence. I see. So that's why there were regular patrols around that area. But if that happened half a year ago, why are they still maintaining the patrol route? As it turns out, a number of other girls have disappeared around the area too. They're ancient cases though, so I didn't have time to dig into them. That concluded my report. Concludes my report. Good work. Well then, should we head straight to the Moroku residence? We must unveil the truth that lurks within the darkness. Pin and stretch, pin and stretch, pin and stretch. We go our separate ways at, Miso at, ways at Kisoji Station, just like yesterday, each get on the train. We reached the Morocco Residence without any particular trouble today. Another wonderful night. I feel like we will make great progress with our investigation. You got here fast today. Well, I learned about after my trip here yesterday. Anyway, same plan as yesterday. 
Yeah, you and someone else go investigate. The other one stays behind to keep watch. Sounds alright with you? Yeah, that's fine. Well, there's a flaw to this plan. Bad looks toward the Merrick residence. It might be the fact that we already explored most of the mansion yesterday. We already checked the hallway, living room, and the bedroom, but there's no other rooms. Hang on a second. From the outside, the mansion looks like it would have a second floor or at least an attic. But from what we saw yesterday... We didn't find stairs anywhere, right? Wait a moment. It doesn't necessarily have to be stairs, right? Maybe there's a ladder hidden somewhere. Rosie makes a good point. I missed those details on my first day of investigation. Let's take one more look around the rooms. That's all we can do. Just have to use our feet, eyes, and hands. Time's wasted. Let's get started. Alright. Monday night. text. How are you? It's D-Man. I prepared your next order. Repeatedly hurry the movement of the monster that moves without rest. Alright. Come now, look at that later. Focus on the investigation. I know, I'm coming. What? Another phone call? As we're sitting through, the loud ring suddenly stopped. I have always hated that sound. I should check it out just in case. I push the long hand around in full circles, but nothing happens. I hate the hands I put it to my ear. I don't hear anything. Is the line connected? Turn the flash and follow the telephone line coming from behind the shelf. Hmm. I notice that something's stuck in between the storage shelf and the wall. I try wedging my hand in, but the crevice is too small and I can't reach it. Did you find something? There's something stuck between the shelf and the wall. The space is so tight my hand can't reach inside. Well, let's move the shelf then. Yeah, that's probably the best way. They're completely dried up. I book one foot off of what seems to be a bunch of bananas. That's what I need right now for life. Bananas. Can I use the banana? Hi. What's up? Can I hang the banana? <laughs> What's up, Dark Soul? <laughs> Sorry, I'm focusing.
Need a hand. Yeah, just in case. Let's go. Here it goes. Let me guess, you guys are too... Yeah, you guys, she's too weak. Hey, come on, take it seriously. I'm sorry, I just... I didn't realize I couldn't possibly lift it. I just lost all my motivation. Of course you did. It's impossible for me. Yes, it can't be helped. Trying to get... <laughs> I'm on my diet next to his regimen again. I oh, feel ya. I'll give you a hand. Then I go to the side swords and... Alright, let's do this. Now. With his call, I pick up the shelf. Perhaps the wood is dense because this thing is far heavier than it looks. Whoa, it's heavier than I thought. We just have to move it a little bit. Don't hurt yourself, old man. I'm not a senior citizen, damn it. Here it goes. Remove it a step or two and set it back down. Damn it, almost threw out my hip there. So, did you get the thing? Yeah, it was on the floor. So what do you think it was? Quit playing around and show it to me. Oh, don't hurt yourself. I, li I light up the object with the flashlight and show him. It's a cassette tape labeled H. Looks like it was worth putting my hip at risk. I wonder what's recorded on this tape. Can I do this yet? Let me do this. I want to get the card. What exercise did you think you did wrong? It's not technically no, it's a spirit hunting game. Oh, that's right. I remember that I brought the replacement battery. I take the new battery from my pocket and swap the batteries. Oh, so you remembered it. We shouldn't have any problem playing the tape now. I put tape H into the boombox. I press the play button. No sound comes out of the speakers. Hmm, is it working properly? Well, the tape is spinning just fine. Maybe it just hasn't gotten to the part where there's sound. Suddenly the phone from the next room rings. This is intriguing. Looks like someone wants us to answer the phone. But the tape is still spinning inside the boombox. Let's go take a look. I see. Yeah, don't do that. You're gonna hurt yourself. I summon up my courage, take the handset, and put it to my ear. Radio noise. I hear something that sounds similar to when tapes are played back. I listen to the headset, just hoping to hear something else. Please just end it. Just kill me already. I almost fling the handset away in response to the scream that pierced my ears. Kate! I'm alright, it's nothing. I 
I can't afford to miss any of it. I immediately return the handset to my ear once again. It hurts so much. Please just end it. Just kill me already. What the hell is this? I hear a girl's voice pleading desperately. From further away, I hear the murmur of an old man. Mm, I see. Sorry, I want to try to keep you alive, but that might be impossible with all four limbs cut off. Oh dear. Just be careful. You can hurt yourself in many ways doing deadlifts in general. The phone ended. The call ended with the man's It ended. It looks like you heard something quite unpleasant. Do you mind telling me what you heard? All right. I described the girl's scream in the voice of the man who apologized. If what he said about cutting off her all four limbs is literal and is true, then this is a recording of something truly terrible. The entire time I heard the sound that sounded like tape noise. I couldn't hear it directly, but I think it was what's recorded on each tape. All four limbs cut off, you say. He apologized when he is a cause. What could this man possibly be trying to do? Sounds like the logic of a psycho. There's no point in thinking about it. Instead of the human centipede, it's the human worm. Even so, we should attempt to figure out the cause of his de deviance. Okay. Can I do this here? To be patient. Always be patient. I'm just trying everything at this point. Uh, hi? What the hell? I can't com contain my shock as my flashlight lights up an object on the ground. I gather myself and look at it again. Is this a doll? This object sitting on the bed seems to be a little girl doll. I'm no doll actor, but I can tell that it's more sloppily made than the Kakuya doll. Its clothes are dirty and there are a couple reddish black stains on it. This little girl is wearing a mask. I wonder what this mask is. It has a beak, so perhaps it's a bird. Who cares? Let's check it out. Do we really want to? I try pulling the mask to remove it, but I won't budge unless it's glued on. I just ignore it for now and take a look at the clothes and notice a reddish black stain there. Oh, we're gonna touch! Oh, we're gonna touch! There's a reddish black stain in the doll's clothing. This might be a blood stain. Looks like blood. Maybe I'll give it a try. I let out the breath to relax and press my fingertip to the blood. I can't button match because I actually have to read. I hear a sniffling, crying sound. Along with it, I begin to hear a quiet voice. I'm famished. Famished. Kate, did you just... Yeah, I tried it out. So it seems. Any luck? I heard a voice. A voice was saying famished. What kind of name is famished? Um, is this kind of some kind of young person joke? No, I mean, I'm saying that I have no idea what they mean by famished. Uh, I thought it was some kind of wordplay I didn't understand. Famished means starving. Basically, they're saying they're really hungry. Huh, that's the first time I've ever heard it. Is it from a weird dialect? It's an older word. I'm not too surprised that you don't know the meaning. It is not that old. We still use it. Good lord. I don't know what the doll would be... St I don't know what a doll would be starving, but... 
That's not the right sentence structure. I don't know how a doll would be starving, but that's what it seems to be saying. Oh. You, you want nasty banana? Take out the dermatome from my bag and place it on top of the doll's lap. The mask makes a sound and then... The mask falls on the doll's lap. Thanks. Goodbye. Please rest your meal quick.